Today I want to talk about uh, how to cultivate, or at least how we should cultivate, female utility as men through our selection of, of women. Meaning that we should not only look for beauty in women, physical beauty, but as important as physical beauty, we need to also start choosing our women based off what they can offer to us. You know, the gender roles of yesteryear taught us that men are supposed to be the ones that take care of everything. And they rewarded us uh, with women, which, by the way, is a form of, a, of an objectification of women. I don't want to objectify women. I want to make sure that whatever women I'm with is going to have something to produce, something that she can bring to the table other than, you know, what's between her legs. And this is the type of environment that men have refused to cultivate. Because, well, because we've been taught that, that our, our prize in life, our, our goals in life, is to get a woman to spread their legs for us. But in, in, in the meantime, while men were busy competing and competing to, you know, get a good housewife that'll stay home and take care of the kids and all that, um, while we were competing uh, for women as objects of our desire, we have, in essence, and, and feminism just, just expedited this, created an environment where women are expected to do nothing but uh, fuck, eat, and sleep, and maybe spit out babies for us. And, and, and when I say that women are expected to do this, I don't mean that they're expected to do this only by men. I mean that rampant competition for females has produced this type of woman that feels entitled to do this. That feels that she can just get by on her looks and her reproductive ability, but we need to start demanding more as men. If a woman can't contribute anything other than running out her genitals to you for extended periods of time, then she is not a, a suitable woman to reproduce with. A suitable mate, a suitable uh, companion, if she cannot provide to you any interesting, in, insightful conversation, or if she cannot produce something, if she cannot grow something, if she cannot run a business, run your business if, if for whatever reason you can at the time, uh, if she can't, at the very least, take over the ship instead of expecting you to plot the course at every single point in every single time during your relationship, then she is functionally useless and needs to be discarded because she is a piece of trash is what she is. A woman that can't contribute anything to your agenda and your plans is somebody that needs to be subjected to a quick fucking chuck and nothing more. And this is what men have apparently forgotten these days is that women need to be useful. Not only do they need to be useful when in relationships with men and specifically in relationships with you, but they need to be useful all on their own. This is why women feel entitled to work less and get paid the same. I mean, we all know what happens when you work with women. Um, anything that requires any, any, even a trivial amount of physical labor, men are the ones who are called over uh, to do this. They talk more than they work. We have the societal consensus that less and less should be expected of women. Why? Well, because they can dispense sex. Well, I'm here to say, who cares? I don't care. That's not good enough. It hasn't been good enough. And every girl I'm involved with uh, knows knows that she better be contributing something, period. And if, and if she isn't, then I dump her. I mean, I cut her loose and I never speak to her again. At the most, I use her for sex because that's the only thing that she's offering of any use. And then I move on. You know, that might sound harsh, but it's the truth. It's the truth. If a woman can only offer sex, she shouldn't be surprised when men only use her for it. Women use men all the time to get what they want. So it's only fair that men use women in the same way. A man that has no demonstrable use to women is ridiculed in every possible way. And by the way, the reason our society targets and makes fun of uh, virgin males the way they do, especially, especially in a time where where just having sex with women is risky these days. But the reason that there's this ridicule and this disdain is because women have sex with men based on what they can do for them. Even all this bad boy alpha nonsense that people talk about, that has its basis in what that so-called bad boy can do for the female. And I've talked about this before. She's attracted to him because she knows that she can wield him as a tool. And that he'll be all too happy to comply because, well, you know, she has a vagina between her legs and 
and she's allowing him uh, access to it. So, so you know, whenever said female opens her mouth to the wrong person, she can call her miscreant of an alpha male boyfriend over and have him kick the crap out of another male. And that's the utility that females are attracted to in these uh, so-called alpha male types. Why do you think women are attracted to doctors? Why do you think women are attracted to pilots? I mean, sure, money plays a role. But let me explain to you the deeper um, motivations behind it. You know, I saw a documentary once where a woman who had married a doctor uh, was talking about what exactly attracted her to him. And she said that the number one thing was just this, this piercing intelligence that I guess she got off of. The deeper motivations behind it is the fact that these men, doctors, pilots, they are capable, more so than, than most other men, of handling rigorous stress and, and challenge on a daily basis, day in, day out, meaning that she will not have to handle any of that stress, meaning that she can bypass that and pass it on to uh, her male partner because he's well equipped to handle these kind of stressful situations. Because you see, when talking about stress, you got to start asking yourselves what determines quality of life. Uh, quality of life can be summed up in a series of stressful events, a series of stressors, uh, and how you react to them. And that's generally how men achieve high quality of life. Men can achieve a high quality of life based only on how they react to stresses and how well they handle them, whereas women seek to bypass that stress entirely. And this type of stress avoidance is off limits to men. You know, men can't say, I'm just going to take it easy and have a woman pay for everything. No, we're expected to handle stress well. And that's why we die earlier. And, and that's also why uh, men of distinction and of talent, such as doctors and, uh, and lawyers and, and other highly skilled professionals, are sought after by women because they can handle all the stress that they are trying to avoid. It's a symbol of her meal ticket. She can sit back, relax, while the man handles everything. And that type of, that type of relationship is something that I avoid like the plague because I am not trying to carry dead weight. And, 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 and access to her vagina is not enough. It is not enough to handle the daily stresses. I mean, look, I, you know, I can handle these daily stresses on my own. You know, I do it on my own just fine. But, but without the added uh, burden of a female to support and carry and, and maintain, no, I don't want to maintain any female. If I'm going to be doing all this work, if I'm going to be enduring all this stress, if I'm going to be uh, on top of my game, then I have to make sure that my prize belongs to me. And I don't want any female as a prize. No, I'll take maybe heaps of money. I'll take maybe happiness. I'll take maybe, uh, you know, the ability to go on a vacation, leisure time. All of these things are important to me. But if a female wants to enjoy that with me, then she better be bringing something to the table. And that's the mentality that most men lack and that most men need desperately. Because as long as most men are willing to finance useless females for access to pussy well we're going to be in trouble we're going to keep being in trouble because we're going to increasingly come across a caliber of female that is incapable of rendering any type of support any type of assistance and furthermore she's going to believe increasingly more and more that it is all that she has to offer that it's all that's required of her well with this staggering economy we're in uh those days are over and men are going to have to start selecting women more and more based on what they can contribute. Every girl I'm involved with now contributes something to me. To me. So I really got to say about it.